Okay, so I'm just going to figure out where my eye layer is. I can select the eye and then I can go down to my timeline and hit O or Shift O to get down to the eye layer and I can find that eyeball in there. And remember you can draw drawing swap using the bracket keys, but in this case I've only got one eyeball for each, each view. And so what I need if I want to create a blink is I need a second eyeball that's going to you know, close the eyelid a little bit. So I can go to my drawing view and then I'll just, you know, try to find where my eyeball is and maybe I'll turn on my drawing grid to make sure I can figure it out. Sometimes if you get lost, turning on the drawing grid is a good idea um, just to make sure that you know exactly where you are. So it looks like this eye eyeball has actually been split up into um, eyelid, pupil, and eyeball. And what I really wanted was the eyelid layer and there are probably, yes, there are some blinks in the eyelid layer. So it looks like I'm okay, I don't need to create a new drawing. If you did need to create a new drawing, then you can just select a frame in your timeline there and you can either duplicate the drawing or you can create an empty drawing if you want to create a new drawing from scratch. And these um, buttons show up here when I have my Windows Toolbars Timeline View Toolbar open. I usually like to leave that one open. Um, so, okay, let's go ahead and add the blink in here. So I've got that open eyeball and by the way, you'll notice that they've labeled these in here in a smart way. Q stands for three quarter, so I know Q1 and I want to go to Q2 and then I'm going to go to Q3 for the closed eyelid. And, uh, and then, you know, at some point, maybe he's going to blink for a couple of frames and then I want him to open his eyes again. So I will just go on until he's open again. So let's take a look at this in the timeline now. There we go, nice little blink. And I probably want to do the same thing on the other layer. So one thing that is nice, by the way, to know is that if you've named these like the same, if I go in my eyelid layer on the other eye and they're also named Q1, Q2, and Q3, if they're the same name, I should just be able to copy the exposure from here using Control C and paste with Control V and it's actually going to paste the same exposure. This is something to understand because when you copy and paste in the timeline down here or when you're copying and pasting in the X sheet, um, which is just another way of representing these things, what it does is it doesn't copy the actual drawing. What it does is it copies the exposure and the exposure is simply the label that tells you which drawing to use. So if you have the same labeling convention in multiple different layers, what it will do is it will use the drawing with that label on that layer. And that's why I'm able to copy and paste the exposure from one drawing layer to another, even though they're using different drawings. Like even though this eyeball is sort of skinnier this way than this eyeball, it still works. So hopefully that was an okay concept to understand. Um, but one thing now that we want to move to is, is this discussion of how can we now save this blink as a, as a, um, a template that we can use to, um, to save that blink and reuse the blink. And um, it's probably a good idea now to collapse the two eye pegs in there, but you kind of have to know where, where the drawings are that you want to save your blink. So I'm just going to get my cursor on the correct frame there and I know that I have to go forward until frame you know, 30, 33. So I can start at 28 here. And then I can collapse those two and I can drag and drop from 28 to 33, which is about there. And now that I've got both of those selected, I can drag and drop this template now into my library and I'm going to call this one Karate Rabbit Action Blink. Now, in this case, when you're saving your template, it saves both the drawings and the keyframes on it. Um, and when you drag and drop it back in again, you might not want to use both the drawings and the keyframes. What I mean by this is, if we sort of zoom out a little and look at the animation on this guy, I've already got the animation done for the head. I've already got the keyframes set the way I want them to be but I want to just add the blinks after as new drawings without changing the way that the keyframes are working because if I have keyframes on my eyes 
if I drag and drop a normal drag and drop, you know, it's going to overwrite those keyframes. It will overwrite whatever keyframes I had. Do you see how when I did that, it added keyframes on my timeline? In this case, it works because the keyframes aren't really doing anything, but I don't really want it to, to save those keyframes. And I can also notice when I do this that I didn't save my template all the way far enough because I didn't get the eyes all the way back open. But it's not the end of the world because I can go into my Blink, I can edit the template, which is going to pop open the template as a separate window. Here we go. Sorry, I'm working on a MacBook Air here, and it sometimes does get a little bit chuggy. Okay, so now if I go inside my my Blink template here, I can see I've got a few frames. I can just extend the exposure on those um, drawings there with F5 for another frame, and I can go ahead and go inside there, and you'll see all the drawings in here if you look at it. It's just looking like a smaller version of the other scene, and I can just swap to the to the open eye on those two frames. So that way I can get those in there. Now if you want to directly in this template you can hit F7 just to clear out the keyframes uh, which could be good uh, but I'll show you another trick also. So let's save this and it warns me that it might not be usable as an action template and what it means by that is if I made a change in the structure it won't work anymore. So it's warning you to be careful that you didn't change the structure and I didn't all I did was I changed the exposure on the drawing. I didn't reorder anything. I didn't add any new layers, so I should be fine. And now I can close that. And if you're in doubt, then you can always save as so that you create a new template there. So when I drag and drop this in now, we'll just double check. It drags and drops it in without creating those keyframes, and it also has the full level of blink. Now, if for some reason, though, you want to drag and drop it in, but you only want to drag and drop the drawings and not the keyframes. I want you to know that you can drag and drop your thing in and as you're dragging, if you hold down, um, let's just figure out which key it is because sometimes I forget. If you hold down control, then what the control does is it brings up your drag special or your paste special window. And what this now does is if you go into your advanced tab, what you can do is you can control whether you want it to do something with the drawings, whether you want it to do something with the keyframes, or whether you want it to do nothing. So if all I want it to do is adjust keyframes, then on drawings I'll put do nothing and I'll leave all the keyframes on. If I want it to just do drawings and not do keyframes, then I can uncheck all of those keyframe options and I can leave the drawing option on. One other thing to be aware of, by the way, is that by default it leaves it on only create drawing files when they do not exist. And what this means is if it looks in the drawing layer and it sees an exposure with the same name as the exposure in the template, it's going to reuse that exposure. If you turn on always create new drawings, then what it will do is it will, if it looks and it sees a Q1 in the template and it also sees a Q1 in the you know, original source file, it will create a new name, calling it Q1 underscore one or whatever, and this new name now is going to be a separate drawing and you'll be able to swap to that drawing separately in your library window. Most of the time you want to leave it on only create drawing files when they do not exist, but sometimes you're going to add drawings in, like if you're adding new hands, you might always want to create new drawings because you know that those hands don't exist in here. But sometimes as you're drawing, let's say you're, you're um, an animator and you're working in a scene file and you're adding a whole bunch of hands in your drawing. When you add, it will call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? By default, it just gives them a number. And if you haven't named them something special, then another animator who's working on your team might be using the same rig and they might be creating their own hands and their hands might also be labeled one, two, three, four, five. Now if you want to combine both of those new hands into your master template, you, you want to make sure that it's going to give it a new name so that otherwise what it will do is it will only create the first five from the first person and then it will see when, it, when you drag and drop the, the, the second person's um, work in there 
it will see there's already one, two, three, four, five, and it won't create it because it thinks you've already got those drawings in there. Um, the other thing you can do is make sure that you have a good naming convention, but if you don't, and a lot of people don't, then you can use this option when you're adding new drawings into a master template. But most of the time we can leave this on here. So now that we've got this set, I can drag and drop this in, and now it's bringing in just the drawings without bringing the keyframes in. Now one thing to be aware of though is when you adjust those drag special options using control, it's going to save that information for the next time you do a drag. So if you ever get yourself into a situation where you're dragging a template in and it's not bringing something and you're expecting it to, then just double check your drag options to, to make sure that you didn't change something the last time you did it um, because it will be reusing what you did the last time. So. That's pretty much what I wanted to mention on this one. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that if you want to do things like add new drawings, like let's say um, I'm in my main scene now, let's um, add a new hand, right? So I've got my hand layer here. I can check out the drawing. I'll just make sure that I've got the drawing layer selected here. And I can duplicate the drawing to create a new drawing, and I'll just figure out where that is and now I can add a new drawing in here and I'll just do something really simple like adding a thumb which I think I may have done the last time around also but we'll get the, the, the trick across here so let's say I've added a thumb now I've added a new drawing with a thumb in it and this is a brand new hand that I want to make available for all the artists then what I should do is I should first drag and drop just the drawing into my library and I can label this something smart um, you know, KRO2 hand works pretty well. Um, maybe I just want to make sure that this is a uppercase so that it's the same as the other ones. 